exchange for cash from Planned Parenthood and the rest of the abortion lobby, they've become the party of death, promoting painful late-term abortions on demand up until the moment of birth, and now even advocating infanticide. For years, the pro-life movement has sought to shed light on the extreme position of our opponents. But today, thanks to Governor Cuomo in New York, Delegate Kathy Tran, and Governor Northam in Virginia, we have them in their own words. And the majority of Americans don't like it. Thanks to a pro-life president in the White House, we've seen an unprecedented number of life-affirming policies advanced. Planned Parenthood has been defunded of more than $60 million in Title X funding. Yeah, but they also went up in all their other funding. Yeah. yeah. I mean, under Trump, Planned Parenthood funding went up. And even though the, the Title X thing got, got, uh, they got cut off from that, their overall funding still increased from the federal government. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though you had a majority, at least for Trump's first two years, you had Republican president, you had Republican Senate, and you had Republican House for, for Trump's for 2017 through 2019. Mm-hmm. And yet, Planned Parenthood got more money than ever. Yeah. Right? But you've made life a winning issue. But what does that mean? It means you've got Republicans who don't do anything. Mm-hmm. It means you've created a thing where they can say I'm pro-life and get elected on that platform, but not care a rip about pre-born children, mm-hmm. not care a single bit. Um, and that is the fruit of this strategy of compromise in big tent yeah. um, and just trying to paint the other side as extremists and us as moderates. You're going to get moderates who don't care about the issue. Mm-hmm. That's what this that's what this creates. And it just goes to show exactly what happens, the fruit of having such horrible demands. Because as soon as you get a candidate who will give you any attention, like will invite you to the White House or like mm-hmm. President Trump, he had Kristen Hawkins in to, uh, as mm-hmm. an advisor. Um, that amount of attention is seen as enough for them a lot of the times. Like they're, they're, they're becoming, they've become shills for, for certain candidates because uh, they'll give them any amount of attention and they'll run all this cover for them when they should be the ones making the demand and saying, that's not enough. Right. Their um, standards are so low. Like Trump speaks at March for Life and it's like, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened in the history of the abortion the battle. The most pro-life president ever. Yeah. It's like, man, that's enough to get you to, to be all in for this guy like that, really? Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, it's very low standards because they're short-sighted. They're not trying to play the long game of shifting culture. They're trying to win certain elections yeah. and this can win you an election but it's not going to get you anywhere yeah in, in the battle yeah so i think we've seen enough from this video just to just to get a basic understanding of what they're trying to do with their rhetoric now i think that uh pro-life rhetoric falls into a couple of different categories um and we can go through these there's a bunch of examples that we've gathered so now we have an understanding of kind of why um, that they are soft and why they kind of treat abortion like health care and only go for, you know, common sense, moderate regulations and that and that sort of stuff. But even just like the most the most commonly used pro life catchphrases or or terms, they're not they're not designed to create the idea in the hearer's mind that abortion is murder, that it's the violent killing of a human being or anything like that. They're meant to be very kind of happy, upbeat um, sort of thing, and that's the strategy because you're trying to appeal to the mushy middle or trying to make the other side look extreme. And so the mm-hmm. you know the terms are pro-life, choose life, love them both, stuff like that. That who could ever in their right minds you know object to pro-life yeah. or choose life, right? But you're not you're not speaking about abortion in a way that at all captures the gravity of the issue. Um, you're, you're you're not you're not creating a conversation about whether or not abortion's murder. You're creating a conversation about whether or not. Um, we need to, you know, help the mom choose life or whether or not we need to be some, you know, vaguely, you know, pro-life thing. We're not, we're not saying um, we're, we're calling for anything to be abolished. We're just saying that we support life. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, that's, it's, it's because they're, they're not trying to create the conversation that needs to be created. They're just trying to appear very happy and not, you know, not uh, this kind of overbearing, you know, were you know your moral conscience telling you you need to like repent of something mm-hmm. no it's just we're trying to be a happy go lucky movement that appeals to the mushy middle all positivity nothing negative which is right. really not a good good trait for a movement that's trying to uh make an evil seen as an evil yeah um when when you're an anti-slavery advocate you're not saying pro freedom pro these kinds of things you're saying i am against the enslavement of fellow image bearers of God because it is barbaric and evil and terrible. Um, yeah. Pro-lifers, it's really just uh, that 
I think that was a big part of the motivation as well as just to be seen as this positive thing. Like we're, yeah. we're pro women, we're pro babies, we're pro all these different things. Um, you need to be negative. It, you need to be focusing on how negative abortion is because otherwise you're never going to win with, uh, with essentially just making people feel good. That doesn't yeah. make people uh, convict. That doesn't convict people to change. It just uh, may cast you in a better light. You might think, I think it makes them look fake. Um, I think it makes them look really fake, but uh, it it's not actually going to benefit the preborn children who are being murdered because you're not painting an accurate picture of what's happening to them. Uh, and th- so it's vague, it's vague and it's, and it's, it's, it's soft um, at best, but then there's other things that they'll say, like choose life. That's a, another example you see in bumper stickers all the time. Yeah, and well, that's oh, I, I love how common this one is. Like, there's like a like I think it's like a whole movement, or it's like an organization. I think it's like choose life license plate. I think it's an organization mm-hmm. that's getting these choose life license plates available in all these different states. And this is actually what uh, you know the the inspiration for for this show came from. We were talking with some friends. Um, uh, about about you know a friend who's now an abolitionist who has uh, a choose life bumper a choose life license plate on their car and we got talking about you know whether or not that's that's good messaging or not and there's nothing it's not inherently evil right it's not immoral it's not dehumanizing you know some preborn children yeah it's like the biblical phrase is like choose choose life right yeah <laughs> but it's just it's so it's so weak like it it can mean so many different things mm-hmm. um and it's it's not it's not creating the conversation that needs to be created the conversation that needs to be created is does abortion need to be abolished mm-hmm. because it's intentional killing because it's murder mm-hmm. no it's like should a woman is it is is it better for her to choose life or is it better for her to have an abortion mm-hmm. like that's the conversation that you're creating with this sort of thing it and, plays into the pro-choice paradigm too because it's yeah. like oh you, you can either be for it or against it it's more of a personal opinion and if you yeah. just say oh choose life you're you're more expressing opinion you're not expressing any kind of moral outrage right. at the alternative uh, which again you don't want to be playing into the basic premises of your enemies you want to yeah. be rebutting them and saying no this is not a legitimate choice that anyone should have you should not be pro-choice when it comes right. to rape. You should not be pro-choice when it comes to murder. Right. You should not be pro-choice when it comes to child molestation. That's an evil, terrible thing for you to think. Um, so I'm not just going to say pro not raping somebody. I'm going to say <laughs> I'm against rape because it's evil and it's terrible and you shouldn't do it. Yeah. Um, the rhetoric ought to reflect the the truthfulness of the issue and how clear-cut it is. Yeah. It shouldn't be a, a matter of making it a matter of debate or objectivity or something like that. You know, we we can have debate, sure, but ultimately I'm going to be telling you how evil you are for supporting something that is evil because that's what you should be told. 